Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we're building a DC train controller with an Arduino. Welcome back everybody. First of all, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any updates, including Arduino tutorials like this video. So let's get right down to business. In order to build this DC train controller, you're going to need an Arduino Uno, an Arduino L298P motor shield, a breadboard, a rotary potentiometer or rotary knob, a single pole switch, in this case we've adapted out to be able to use on the breadboard with some DuPont wires, a 1K resistor, a 12 volt DC power supply, and an adapter if necessary so that you can adapt the DC power supply to the wire terminals of the motor shield, and a bunch of these DuPont connector prototyping wires. The first thing you need to do is to place the motor shield on top of the Arduino, and remember the pins line up exactly. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to place our rotary potentiometer and our single pole switch connectors onto the breadboard. Now we begin hooking everything up. So first we're going to do our power connections. We're going to be using a red wire for the 5 volts and a white wire for the ground. We connect from our Arduino power supplies to the breadboard power strips. And then first we're going to hook up the rotary potentiometer. In this orientation, we're going left to right, power, sensor, ground. We then hook up the ground to the far right side pin of the potentiometer, leaving the middle pin open for the sensor output. Next we're going to hook up our power to our single pole switch. Now we're going to be using this like a sensor, so we're going to rig it up exactly like a photoresistor, and we're going to have a resistor inside the circuit and we're going to split up the ground between the sensor and the actual ground connection. And then we're going to connect the end that goes through the resistor to the ground. Next, we're going to hook up our sensors. We're going to use this blue cable and hook it into A0. And then we're going to hook our single pole switch sensor with this green wire into A1. The last thing we need to do before programming is we need to attach our power adapter to the DC connections in the motor shield. You may not need to do this depending on the power supply that you use. If you're using the power supply that I have linked in the description below, it comes with one of these adapters and you will install it as so. Okay, let's head over to the computer. Okay everyone, so we're in our Arduino IDE and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to establish a couple of integers. So the first thing we need to do is we need to do int sensor val. Now what that is, is that is going to be the value on our rotary knob, also known as a potentiometer. So that's the first thing that we are going to do. So the next integer we're going to need to do is we're going to need to do int and we're going to type in Speed. And make sure you do that with a capital, um, otherwise, here I'll show you, it has some other programming language. You can see it turns orange. So make sure you do that capital so that it doesn't mess anything up. And then the final variable we're going to do is int direction. Okay, so now we're going to hop into our setup, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do serial dot begin. 9600 and that's just as you know to get our serial monitor going um, as you've seen me do in many other tutorials then we're going to do pin mode 12 output and p 
pin mode nine output. Now this is what's going to be our motor controls on the L298 motor shield. So pins nine and 12 will be what we're using to control the output of the motor shield. So we'll go ahead and say that this initiates DC power on motor A. And then we'll also say that this initiates brake on motor A. So that's because we were hooking into motor input A on the L298 motor shield. Um, I also need to put a couple different things in here. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to do pin mode A0 is an input. And then that's gonna establish the speed from the rotary knob. Then we're going to establish pin mode A1 as an input and this establishes direction input and I should put input right here. So that's everything you need to do for the setup. Now we're going to head into the loop. So the first thing we need to do is say that sensor valve equals analog read a zero. And then we need to do direction analog read a one. So what this does is This reads the value from A0. And this reads the value from A1. And then we can put, we'll go ahead and put this in so that we can do some tweaking. Serial dot print ln sensor val. So what that'll do is it'll tell us the value that the rotary knob is sending out once we hook it into the computer. Okay, so the next command we're going to use is we're going to be using a map command. And what we're going to be doing is the map command remaps a number from one range to another, meaning that from one low value will get mapped to another low value, and then another high value will get mapped to another high value. And I'll show you when I type this here. So we're gonna go ahead and establish the speed integer, and then we're gonna do map. And then we're gonna do sensor val zero to 1,023. Oh, forgot to put a comma in right there. So that's the values, that's the min and the max that the rotary knob potentiometer will send out. And then we need to say zero to 255, which is the maximum value that our motor shield will output to a motor. Okay, so what we're basically saying here with the map function is we're saying that the sensor value, which is going to be one or zero to 1023, is going to map percentage wise to 0 to 255. So the percentage increase when the sensor value goes from 0 to 1023 is going to translate to 0 to 255 and that's going to equal the speed that the motor shield outputs to the motor. In this case it's the track. So 
That's what the map command is doing. It's basically make them see the same percentage increase. All right, so now we're gonna move on and we're going to say that we want this to write. So we're gonna do analog write three comma speed. And what that's saying is our minimum value is going to be three and our maximum value is going to be whatever the speed is that we have mapped here. So all of this was to turn the value that our rotary knob potentiometer is giving us into a value that can be outputted from the motor shield. And we're making that value speed. And what we're saying is it's going to write three to whatever speed we're getting from all of this with the rotary knob. So it can go all the way up to 255. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to establish how we tell the direction of travel that we want the train to go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, if direction is less than 500, and then we're going to do a bracket. So what we're saying is if the direction pin is less than 500, which it's going to either send 1000 or zero, the reason that I like using analog pins, and I know some people have said, why don't I use digital pins? The reason I like using analog pins is because it leaves more room for error, like if there's a little bit of a hiccup or something, and it won't uh, backfire on you. So we're gonna go ahead and do digital right 12 high, and this is going to establish forward direction. Then we're going to do digital right nine low. And then this is going to release the brake. We also need to do the other direction, so we're going to do else if direction is greater than 500, digital right 12 low, which establishes the reverse direction and then digital right nine low which releases the brake. Okay, let's make sure that this program works out. Okay, looks like our program works and compiles, so we're gonna upload this to the Arduino and head back over to the workbench. Okay, we've hooked our track up to the motor A terminal of the motor shield. That's what's gonna be sending out our power. Now let's turn the rotary potentiometer and see what happens. And sure enough, our train runs. Turn it up to the maximum throttle. And now we'll slow it back down. We'll throw the directional switch. Sure enough, it runs in reverse.
that is how you build a DC train controller with an Arduino. Now the reason that we are using an Arduino for this is it allows for easier automation. There are easier ways to build a DC train controller, but when you use an Arduino, you're gonna have more chances to put in sensors and allow for automated running, starting, stopping, slowing speeds, all sorts of different things. So this is really a base for a lot of fun things that you can do. So thank you guys so much for watching. We're definitely going to be doing more with this system. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any updates, including more videos we're going to be doing with this Arduino train controller. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY Digital. Happy Railroading.